laughter itself has been gained. And I would say that actually one of the most troubling inventions that human beings have devised. This is going to sound preposterous, but one of the most troubling... Laugh trouble- track. Laugh track. Yeah, That's yeah, it. no kidding, eh? The, yeah. And the idea that you can be induced to believe that something was humorous, that you did not find humorous on your own, actually starts leading the population in the direction of believing things very deeply that they would never have accepted in the first place. So yeah. it may yeah. be used just to sell you know, deodorant and cereal on some trivial sitcom, but the capacity to induce humans to come to conclusions they wouldn't otherwise reach by making it sound as if they are in a room full of people laughing in agreement, that's a very troubling thing. Right, right, right. So Heather? To go back to your, your quote from Stoppard, the brilliant Tom Stoppard, laughter is the sound of comprehension. Is yeah. that it? Um, I think uh, it, I agree uh, but I think in your telling of the story of what happens as comedians talk um, actually um, conflates two things, both of which are important. And we've been talking about the individual coming to consciousness. The comedian says something in the individual brain. They go, oh, I didn't know. That was subconscious until now. And now it's explicit. Now it's conscious. <laughs> I didn't know. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But there's Silly me. A, s- silly me or, oh, God, mm-hmm. they can, <laughs> he can see that or you know, whatever mm-hmm, it is. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> But then there's also the population level, and you you alluded to this in what you said, but I think it's no less important than maybe exactly what, you know, a rally, for instance, is meant to do and exactly what we need right now. And, you know, I'm sure you experienced this, Jordan. We certainly experienced this, where um, people will come up to us and say, you know, thank you for saying the things that you say. I don't feel alone. I, you know, I don't, I, yes. I, I don't, I didn't know. Or that I couldn't say. I couldn't say, I, yeah, I yeah. didn't, I, I, I had come to understand this, but I thought I was the only one in the universe. Yeah, right. And so, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. taking it back to um, comedy uh, in a, a group of anonymous people, a large group of anonymous people, if everyone laughs at the same moment, not only did that maybe bring yourself to consciousness of that thing at that moment, or maybe you already knew it, but if everyone laughs, you know, I am not alone. I I am in sync. We are synchronized. We are seeing the same things. The lens through even which with are, regard to the unspeakable. Even with regard to the unspeakable, and so right away that gives you a, a momentum and an opportunity for action that maybe you did not know was possible before. Uh, so I think that's an addition. Additional, the individual and the population are not the same. Oh, absolutely. And, and um, I think comedy potentially activates both. Yeah, it's the power. It's the power of the room or the population that comes to understand itself as aligned. 